Um, hello everybody, my name is Robin, and today I wanted to talk about a little more of a sensitive subject within the Ball Jointed Doll community, namely um, recast. If you don't know what a recast is, I will be explaining it shortly, and if you do know what a recast is, I will um, be explaining more about my stance on it later. And after that, I will be comparing a recast and a legit Ball Jointed Doll to each other. If you want to see that, I have included timestamps in the description, so if you just want to skip through that and skip all the explanations then go right ahead <laughs> you know where to go so first of all i wanted to talk for a second what a recast is if you're new in the community and don't know what it is yet a recast ball jointed doll is a ball jointed doll that is not made by the original manufacturer of the ball jointed doll a ball jointed doll is made usually by well sometimes it can be only one person i think most companies are around four or two. <laughs> I don't know exactly, but they, are very, they aren't very big. Um, so some, somebody sculpts a doll out of clay and then once they're finished, uh, they send it off to a casting company. The casting company sends back the copies and then the artist will charge a price that they feel like is fair for the work that they did. And usually they will also include clothing, wigs, maybe a face up, uh, all that. In that case, you're buying a full set doll. If you're buying a blank doll, then well, it, it doesn't come with that. But essentially, that's what they're charging for. And yeah, then you buy a doll from an artist. A recast, however, um, a recasting company buys the doll from the artist and then they make a mold of it themselves and sell the doll against a lower price then the artist sells it against because they don't have to sculpt it uh, they don't have to send it out for casting so they can cost it at their factory as far as i know they usually are a bigger company so they have more employees yeah it's just kind of an unfair competition towards single artists that are just trying to make a living essentially which is also why it is such a controversial topic within the um ball gender doll community because there is a heavy debate uh, going on whether buying recasts is okay or not. Uh, I just want to clarify real quick that the recast that I have in my possession for this video right now is only bought for educational purposes. I bought her from somebody uh, who is quitting the hobby. After this, I will not be keeping her. I will giving her. I will be giving her. <laughs> I will be giving her to somebody who can't afford a ball jointed doll, whether it be legit or recast, and still really wants to partake in the hobby. Yeah, that's um, just kind of as a disclaimer. <laughs> I personally. I personally am pro artist, I don't support recast. Yeah, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> so if you buy a recast, what exactly happens? So you buy a recast, the doll gets sent out and it arrives to you. Um, great, you got a doll now. Usually they come with boxes that slightly resemble the box that the company gives it but not really or they just don't come in a nice box at all. Lately they have been faking the certificate of authenticity which is not very easy to say so beware of that because um, usually a giveaway when you um, have a doll and you're not sure whether it's recast or legit you can ask for the COA or the certi certificate of authenticity <laughs> that and if it's included then it's likely that it's a legit doll but lately the bigger recasting companies have been faking those certificates so definitely beware of that so what is the really big deal like what's the impact of buying a recast doll First of all, most spaces for Baltic doll owners are legit spaces, to say it like that. Many people will prefer not to interact too much with people who openly collect and support recasts. Uh, the biggest Baltic doll forum doesn't support recasts and I don't think that you can have an account if you have a recast, but I'm, don't quote me on that. I remember their rules being pretty strict, but... I wouldn't necessarily know for sure. There are forums that you can go to if you are pro recast, but they aren't as informative and well used, I think, as Den of Angels, which is like the biggest ball gender doll forum. I personally don't use Den of Angels because I just don't like the site, but that's my personal reason. <laughs> okay, so besides that, um, because people have been sending money into recasters' hands uh, for the past years, they have adapted their technology they can now also 3d scan dolls instead of just casting them and they will also well now they started including boxes and fake certificate of authenticities they they are doing more and more to make it look like a legit doll there was a mini fee that was being passed off as a frozen 2 anna doll 
to like make it more into a, like a merch thing which in my opinion that's just not okay but it's it's not as bad as it gets i guess but also uh the recos kind of ruined the second hand market because due to this because there are people who will sell recos without saying that it is actually a recos um, due to na there now being certificates and boxes with them it gets more and more difficult to tell whether you bought a recos or a legit even though all the evidence pointed at my mini fee being legit, I still got freaked out at one point because I did something wrong with the head and I was like, oh my god, it doesn't fit. And I had like this whole investigation started on whether I was sold a recast or not. It turned out to be legit. <laughs> Due to the dishonesty of some sellers, which is definitely not all of them, the secondhand market is becoming more and more of a difficult place to navigate in, which is really difficult for also Baldrin to doll newbies who... I know if you're here and you're listening to this, what is a recost and why is it bad? <laughs> then you probably don't know too much about it yet. So I, I hope that this information helps you a little bit. On to the main event, so to say. I have my legit mini fee Mirwen here. Uh, I got her secondhand from the local marketplace once again, because I'm addicted to the local marketplace. And she came with two sets of outfits, two alpaca wigs, which are pretty expensive. So I was really pleased about that. Uh, two pairs of eyes, an extra pair of shoes, extra pair of hands, extra pair of feet, the box, of course, the certificate, of course. I am kind of paranoid about showing those things because I just, I legit don't want recosters to get more information than they already have. If you if you need to see the box or the certificate or whatever, uh, you can DM me on my social media and I will send you pictures if you want to know what they look like uh, for information. Uh, this is Merwin <laughs> and I really like her. I thought that uh, before I had a Fairyland doll, I thought they were kind of overrated, but now that I have one, I, can, I, I really get it. <laughs> they, she poses very sturdily and she's super strong, super beautiful. It's almost impossible to get an ugly pose with her. I mean, you can, you can definitely don't. It's very easy to do it if you want to, but like if you just put her in a pose that sort of looks natural, it will look very nice. And then here we have... The recast. <laughs> That's so... Oh, there we go. That, that sounds so disrespectful to say, but like this is this is a bootleg. As you can tell, there is a little bit of a color difference going on between the two, if you can tell. I got her secondhand of the local marketplace as well. I went to pick her up and I got her solely for the purpose of this video. Somebody is walking up the stairs. The noise is gone. Epic. Oh, shit. So, but yeah, this is her. Uh, as you can tell, she has some issues with staying upright, which is one thing that I kind of immediately noticed when I started comparing the two uh, for the video clips that I am showing you in between the Mirwan, the, the legit doll, definitely feels more sturdy than I think Momo. I wasn't sure because the seller wasn't sure. Mirwan feels like she could, could is able to hold a lot more poses and there's kind of like a clicking system in the joint that makes sure that the, the arm or whatever doesn't go anywhere after you kind of bend it into place. Uh, I don't feel that as much with her. They are, neither of them are uh, suede at this point in time. Both of them are strung at about the same tightness. I should mention that she has different legs. They have the same body, I think, uh, an active line body, far as I know, but she does have more bent legs. So I think that those are the cutie legs, but I'm, don't, don't quote me on that once again. <laughs> and there is a significant color difference. You can also tell um, in the arm holes, kind of, that there is some roughness going on that isn't there with Mirwin. Um, so you can definitely feel like she's been a little more carefully produced in my opinion. It is common knowledge that on 10 skin dolls that the seam lines will be a little bit worse than on brighter skin dolls. I when I got her I was like whoa okay these are these are these are some seam lines because none of my other dolls have seam lines this bad. Then I started investigating this gal over here and <laughs> oh my god. I will never say anything about fairyland seam lines again. Uh, there is a point like over here under her armpit where it just feels like the entire mold did not line up correctly and there's like a whole bit kind of sticking over. What I do need to say is that the first time when I, um, it's confession time, I bought a recost once, uh, new, which is, um, because I didn't understand it yet. And, uh, 
I was just fucking stupid. Let's keep it at that. I bought it, I opened the box, and I could immediately smell the resin. I thought that was normal at the time, because you have like things that you can smell plastic. Um, so I thought that that was like common for ball jointed dolls. It is not. If you open a box, you smell the resin. Like, it, and it's like this strong chemical plasticky smile. Smell, um, I think most collectors will be will be able to confirm this, but there is a different kind of smell, <laughs> if that makes sense. This one doesn't have it. I don't know if that's due to um, because she's already pre-owned and the smell just kind of left, or maybe this is a different quality, but that's definitely a thing to be wary of if you're getting a recost. You don't know the quality standards that the company holds itself to. So if you get it and it's, it's made of a toxic kind of resin, then there's nothing you can really do. And if you buy it straight, straight from the company, then you're just at a much lower risk of it being anything that is not okay for your health. If it is, then there, at least there's something you can do, right? There's, there's a company that you can speak to and there's a community that you can warn about it. If you tell the community, yo, I bought a bootleg product and it's bad, they will say, no shit, Sherlock, you bought a bootleg product, essentially. So yeah, just another thing to keep in mind. Also, the seam lines on the leg are really rough. Really rough. Meron also has kind of bad seam lines on the inside of her leg, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. So I just want to, oh my god. She just keeps falling over, I swear. Like, at least that's like more of a straight line. This is more of a jagged kind of... I don't know what the word is. Uh... Like a zigzag kind of line. Like it's really rough and it doesn't look nice. And th she has that on both her legs. Oh, I see here right now as well. Another bit on her leg that just feels like the mold didn't line up correctly. And there's like a bit sticking over. If you look at her from far away, you would not notice these things. But if you look up close, then it's... <sighs> there are just some mistakes that I think are... Whoa. That are worse than... than actual factory mistakes that you can get from like buying it actually from the company i swear to god stay up please so now that i kind of showed you the differences and uh there's not really a tell as far as i know i have noticed that the recost oh my god please that the recost doesn't have uh her name engraved in the head cap but i have seen instances where she does have that so definitely be wary of that 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 is not a definitive tell Neither is the certificate of authenticity, neither is the box at this point, or at least a box. You can still- there is still a difference between the company box and the uh, recast box, as far as I know. But I, the, that is only accurate up to now, as far as I know. Uh, recasters are developing very quickly, so be careful with it. Even if people offer you a box, it might not be legit. Just so you know. There's also the issue with the hands. If you- oh lord, she has super bad seaming on her hands. Does she have the two? Okay, so Mirwan has a little bit of a seam line on her hands, but dear lord, this is um another level. Anyway, on a recast, as far as I can know, this is a tell. I'm not entirely sure, but as far as I know, this is a tell. If you can switch out the hands, like if you can put the left hand on the right arm, then it is very likely that you have bought a recast. As you can tell, I can switch the hands around on this one. When I try to do the same with Mirwan, it won't go on because the, the magnet refuses to, to stick. So I need to put it on this hand. I do need to do that properly. Also, a thing that I noticed is that the, the hand magnets uh, on the recast doll are so much weaker. Every time I tried to handle her and I was a little bit uncareful, then the hands would come off like instantly. And with Mirwan, uh, they are very easy to take off and put back on. But the magnets are pretty strong and I'm not scared about losing um, the hands at all. So the last thing that I wanted to talk about is what to do if you can't afford like a mini fee or in that area. I see a lot of the argument, I am not about to pay 500 dollars, euros, whatever, for a doll. Which is fair. It's a lot of money. I only do it because this hobby has brought me a lot and um, in, in terms of mental stability and friendship and community. But I do understand that if you're kind of new to the hobby that that is a lot of money to pay. So what I did want to talk about is my other dolls and where I got them from and um, how much they cost me. So right behind me, 
we have Miko, who is a Dolphy Dream doll. I talked about her in a previous video uh, together with my Obitsu, who isn't on... No, she is currently on the other shelf. Uh, my Obitsu uh, cost me a total of 100 euros uh, for a 60 centimeter anime, anime doll, which is not a lot for uh, a 60 centimeter doll. Most recasts are more than that if they are 60 centimeters or above. So that's definitely something to look into. Obitsu dolls if you are into vinyl. I bought a secondhand very stained body for uh, Miko because I saw it and it was very cheap. I think it was a hundred, a uh, hundred twenty or something. At least it was very, very cheap. It was mildly damaged, but you know, I had it fixed up in no time at all. And now Miko has a proper body instead of um, a plastic body that I bought a while back, which you can see in another video that where I talk about uh, cheaper alternatives to Dolphy Dreams in specific. Then over here, we have this gal who is currently wearing the wig that came with Mirwin. I need to resuade her. Oh my god. Anyway, this is a Siren Olivia who cost me 120, I think. She is completely legit. She is very old, so she is a little bit jelloed. Oh shit. That was my fault. <laughs> she is completely legit, uh, although she is a little bit old and yellowed. She is, in my opinion, absolutely stunning. She has a little bit of a different style than Minifi, but I do... Yeah, I really like her face. And she also is double jointed in arms and legs, which gives her more of a possibility option than uh, Minifi. Uh, although her the aesthetic of her body you do not kind of need to like it i don't really love how they sculpt the legs uh i have some issue with the leg joints but for a cheaper cheaper ball jointed doll uh, i would definitely say that she is worth the price although she doesn't have the magnetic hands you she is strong in her hands so that's a big plus of fairyland in my opinion but yeah i would definitely recommend looking into cheaper like alternatives to other brands like for example uh resin soul and um meiju dolls i think i will link some companies in the description that have more affordable dolls uh where you can look at the company i personally am going to get a resin soul dawn which is a centaur ball joint doll 40 centimeters and she is stunning once i have the money i am getting her because she is just she is perfect. Now we have Mirai, who I talked about in another video, my unboxing video, who is my grill doll, who I paid 460 euros for, which is a lot because she was full set. And I am willing to recognize that it was a lot, but I have searched for her for over two years. And when the time came around, I asked her owner if I could pay in two or three months. I don't really remember because it's been a while. And her owner agreed and that's how I got her. So that's also, uh, layaway is always an option. Option. If you can't afford a doll right now, you can always ask, hey, can you hold her a while for me? Uh, most sellers will not have a problem if you uh, at least do a down payment. I personally always offer a down payment of 20, which is for me, it's a lot of money. So it's not like I would just back out of the sale, but it's not that much that I can't, you know, just do it in case I really want to buy a doll and want to put her on hold. Now we have Natsuki, who is my first Dolphy dream ever. Uh, I also made a video on her, which you can check out if you want. Also afforded her with layaway. My dear mine, uh, Priscilla, uh, who I also got secondhand uh, on layaway once again. And my, I forgot the company name, oh my God. I made a video on her. I will link the video here and I will put the name here because I forgot the name and I can't really look it up right now. But anyway, she cost me 155, I think. Also a 60, 60 centimeter doll, double jointed in arms, legs and hips. So she can bring her knees up. Um, you can see a review of her on my channel. She's also a lot cheaper than most of the recost SD size dolls that are there are on the market right now so in my opinion it's just really worth to look for legit dolls that are within your price range i'm not saying that you need to buy fairyland or something there was like this whole debate about elitism if that's how you pronounce it uh like if you have a resin soul then you're not a real part of the community because real ball joint doll owners own like volks and minifi and I don't freaking know. <laughs> Expensive doll brands. Personally, I have not experienced that at all. You can just own whatever doll and as long as it's legit, you're basically welcome anywhere in my experience. If you own a recast, people act like you're they you you're demonized for it and people will 
come after you and forever remember it. Never, not in my experience. I own a Recos, I sold her again, and yeah, I have never actually had trouble with it. I don't think I would mind anyone having trouble with it. Like I said, I am giving this Recos away to somebody who can't afford it because financial issues are a real thing and I know I realize how insanely privileged I am to have such a collection as this but it's also part of working to save up. I have afforded all my dolls through layaway, through sellers being able to put her on hold, through um, one seller lowering prices, just lucky, getting lucky. Uh, Miko actually was partly gifted to me by a friend. Yeah it's just it's finding your own way really but it's when you do it's it's really worth it opinion. I think that I said everything that I want to say so far. Uh, I will make sure that I link to everything I talked about in the description, possibly with a timestamp so you can find out where, if you if you are in the video somewhere and you want to know where I got what, then I will make sure that it will be linked with the proper timestamp. If you have any questions, just contact me. If you just want to chat about ball junk dolls, please contact me on any social media. I am always open to talking. Yeah, I will see you guys next time. I really hope you appreciate this video and that you learned something from it. And if you didn't, I hope that you still liked it. I did work hard on it. I didn't want to really make a script so that my opinion, um, wouldn't be sainted, so to say, by r the written word <laughs> to sound a little bit overdramatic. But I realized that I can get a little bit messy when talking in front of a camera from the top of my head. So I apologize for that, but I still hope that you enjoyed the video nonetheless. Thank you!